In this lesson, we're going to learn how to obtain the midesophageal four-chamber view of the left ventricle. This view shows the left ventricle together with the mitral valve and left atrium, and also the right ventricle, tricuspid valve and right atrium. But our main focus is going to be on the left ventricle and on assessing its size, wall thickness, morphology and function. This view is obtained at the mid-esophageal probe position, with a probe facing anteriorly, to obtain a cut through the left ventricle. And I'd suggest starting with a transducer imaging plane angle of zero degrees. However, some fine tuning is needed to obtain an on-axis four-chamber view, and I'll show you exactly how to obtain that. Now, when we start off with our view initially, we tend to get a five-chamber view rather than a true four-chamber, because we have, as well as the two atria and two ventricles in the image, we also have the aortic root, aortic valve, and left ventricular outflow tract. And we want to eliminate these from the image to get a true four-chamber view. So there are a number of manoeuvres that we can make to optimise the image. And to begin with, I would suggest that we advance the probe very slightly, and also that we retroflex the tip of the probe. This alters the angle of the cut that we're getting and helps to exclude the left ventricular outflow tract and aortic root from the view. So a little bit of probe advancement and a little bit of retroflexion. Now the problem with retroflexing the tip of the probe is that we start to lose contact with the anterior wall of the esophagus. So the image quality can start to deteriorate. And sometimes we have to accept a compromise between the amount of retroflexion that we can apply to optimize the image, but without deteriorating the overall quality by losing probe contact. So here's the image that we've now obtained by retroflexing the tip of a probe and advancing it a little, and we can see that it is better. We've eliminated a large proportion of the left ventricular outflow tract and aortic root, but you can still see a little bit of that in the image. So there is one further adjustment that we can make. And what we can do is rotate the imaging plane forwards a little to increase the imaging plane angle to about 10 or 20 degrees. The exact amount will vary from one patient to the next, but by increasing the angle by about 10 or 20 degrees, we will start to fully optimise the four-chamber view. And that's exactly what we're doing here. You can see at the top right-hand corner of the image that we're changing the angle of a transducer imaging plane to try and optimise the image. And as we do alter the angle by a few degrees, you can see how the aortic root and left ventricular outflow tract is disappearing from the image. So by making an appropriate adjustment, you can normally fully optimize the image and obtain a true four-chamber view. In the four-chamber view, we can assess global left ventricular size and systolic function, and we can also look at left ventricular wall thickness, and we can look for any morphological abnormalities, such as areas of hypertrophy consistent with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We can also assess regional wall motion in each of the myocardial segments seen in this view. Those segments are the basal and mid infraseptum, together with the apical septum, and the basal and mid anterolateral segments, together with the apical lateral segment. We can see that on the TE image here. We can see the basal and mid infraseptal segments and the apical septal segment together with the basal and mid anterolateral segments and the apical lateral segment. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited TE Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So take care and I talk to you soon.